embrace the highest live as fully as possible mm. in the good moments and also just do your best to get through the tough times it's gonna end it's gonna pass and try to find good people to get through it with you because that will make it a lot easier welcome to tennis insider club i am borja duran and together with my partner caroline garcia here is where tennis stories and life conversations intersect join us as we uncover the untold personal journeys of the icons of the court from laughter to life lessons it's all here Thank you so much, Luisa, for being here with us. Uh, we are super happy to listen to your story. Um, you are our first double player, let's say. And, <laughs> What uh, an honor. First um, Olympian? No, we had no, Olympian. Ruble, Rublev also oh, won. Yeah. But, uh, third, third Olympian winner. Yeah. Not we bad. We are super happy to have you. <laughs> we'll take it. And you said uh, uh, yes very quickly at the beginning of mm. our podcast history, so we are very mm. grateful for it. No. And um, we would like you to tell us a bit more how did you start to play tennis all right first of all thanks for having me it's mm -hmm. so cool when i first heard that you guys were starting this i was looking forward to hearing the other episodes and i was free to whenever we could yeah uh, we've been trying to do it for a while so i'm <laughs> glad it finally worked out it's the story of our podcast yeah, it's complicated the, it's the scheduling. agendas the scheduling is tough but yeah so i first started when i was 10 years old I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil, as you guys know, but I played a lot of sports growing up. I have an older brother, one year old, one year older. And so we always grew up playing sports in school and after school as well. I did soccer, of course, in Brazil, but futsal, indoor soccer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we played for a team after school and then some volleyball, swimming, taekwondo, which is one of my favorite sports, actually. No yeah, it's a bit different. We played chess together. And then in the summertime, we used to go to my parents, uh, my grandparents' uh, apartment in the beach in mm -hmm. Guarujá, a beach in Brazil. And we always used to play paddle tennis and surfing lessons and like just play around. And my mom couldn't play very well with us paddle tennis. Mm -hmm. And we were little, like nine, ten. And so she, when we got back to Sao Paulo the city, she was like, I need to get better with my coordination <laughs> and like get better with racket sports. So she signed up for a tennis lesson mm -hmm. and she really liked it. She's like, I'm going to put the kids to play this too. And so basically the whole family just started playing out of just not random, but yeah, we loved sports. So we just mm -hmm. started tennis as just another sport and it started working out. We played once a week, every Saturday. And then eventually I started liking it more and like doing it more and asking my parents to go twice a week and then three times a week. Mm -hmm. Then I started having to give up the other sports to find time to play tennis. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, in a f within a year or so, I started playing the local tournaments in the, in the weekend. So we became like a tennis family and everybody <laughs> started to... So I nice, think right? it's this not same, but similar in a lot of... In everywhere, everywhere we go, you know, my parents mm -hmm. were just supporting and taking us on the weekends everywhere. My brother sometimes to one place because he played the yeah. men's tournament. Sometimes mm -hmm. I would go to another. Sometimes <laughs> we would all go together and we just became a crazy mm -hmm. tennis family fans. And yeah, that's how it started. A bit random, yeah. but then we picked up so fast and never stopped. Is there a lot of uh, tennis facility in Brazil? Or? It's tricky because tennis there is a very expensive sport, even just to take lessons or practice or train in like training centers mm -hmm. and so yeah I mean I started a small tennis academy mm -hmm. they had a lot of social classes but they also had a competitive team and then eventually I went to a project that I had it was for girls it was called Meninas de Ouro so golden girls kind of <laughs> and so it was just me and another girl that was another issue we had there like not many girls to yeah. practice mm -hmm. with so the environment is just a lot more boys or are just not as competitive. Mm -hmm. And so when I was 14, my parents, I think a lot of, I didn't know this until later on, <laughs> but my, a lot of the coaches or people that would see me play would be like, oh, she has something special, something mm -hmm. different. Maybe give her a chance, you know, try to take her something somewhere where she can, you know, grow more. Outside of Brazil. Yeah. And then we looked at options in Brazil at mm -hmm. the time. But Sao Paulo is also a big city. It was also expensive and not mm -hmm. as many opportunities in terms of traveling and going to tournaments. So my parents kind of, um, we went to the States. So okay. we started, we went to Satterbrook, which okay. is one of the places huh. I met Caro at. So you moved with the whole family moved, to the States yeah, the for your tennis? Or? Not yeah, I think it was, 
an opportunity for the family too. Mm -hmm. So okay. my parents, mainly for tennis and education mm -hmm. too, and studies nice. to learn English. My brother also played. Mm -hmm. And so we left, basically my parents sold everything, left everything behind, family included. Oh, and we just went with like a two year, one year plan, like one year project, you know, mm -hmm. let's see how it goes. And we had an academy, we had a place to stay, we had a house, we had, you know, school and nice. tennis all set up. So it was kind of like, fully emerge in the tennis um, culture and mm -hmm. and where we, you would eat, sleep and breathe tennis there. Nice. Kind of for us, it was just like the dream, you know, mm -hmm. like going to the States to, to pursue it because I really liked it. It wasn't yeah. forced. It was, I was always, um, I think the whole family was really proud and excited for the mm -hmm. whatever was to come. But now that I'm older, I understand how tough it must be for parents to make this decision and invest so much on like, Oh, let's do this. It's risky, but also it's like tennis, high risk, high reward kind of life, mm -hmm. you yes. know, you don't have any guarantees, but also you get a lot back from it. Mm -hmm. But they always emphasize school, like you need to study and you need to go, you need to play. So mm -hmm. we always, I always went to high school, finished high school. And then I got to the part where I had to choose if I was going to go to college or straight pro. Mm -hmm. Cause I was having decent results in, in juniors, had a good ranking, made top 10. But mostly from doubles <laughs> results because it's all together. So from a young, uh, from yeah. the beginnings, you were already shining at doubles. Yeah, a bit, definitely more. And okay. so I think it made it easier to decide where I had to, you know, go pro or go college. Mm -hmm. I put it in the scale, mm -hmm. and then my parents were always, you know, investing too financially. And it's one of the reasons why going abroad was also better. And mm -hmm. tennis in Brazil, you don't have just as many tournaments or opportunities to play or every time you travel it's far so i traveled a lot in south america for cosats which mm -hmm. is like the south american tour when mm -hmm. i was 12 13 and then from 14 on i went to the u.s and started playing more itfs or just local tournaments there and so it was a big change and yeah that's kind of how it started in terms of tournaments and competing more and mm -hmm. kind of like being in the states i think it just gave me a new perspective you know playing with girls and seeing the level and uh, just training at a higher level and mm -hmm. just everything yeah. was like eye-opening but also exciting yeah so yeah cool. and so you were in us you were trying to to train every day and really like make it to tennis or like as you mentioned mm -hmm. school also was very important for i think since i left when we left from brazil to go to the us i already had it in me like i want to go pro or like i want to mm -hmm. you know started dreaming more about i want to be number one in the world or uh, being the slams but just kind of it seems so far away yeah. that you don't even um i don't know if i didn't think it's not that i thought it was a dream oh let's make this possible but it was just like yeah i want to pursue this career it, mo it was more like mm -hmm. start dreaming about maybe i can do this too or like i used to watch a lot more tennis on tv and always wanted to be an athlete i just always loved mm -hmm. the lifestyle of tennis too and my parents always emphasized school also that they were they knew we were all focused focused on tennis it was priority mm -hmm. but they also made sure we were always like on top of kept studying and yeah. then never really left school or did online school they didn't really want us to go that route yeah they wanted their plan b to, st to still be there no? yeah mm -hmm. and so to college i went mostly because i think i i was transitioning to pros and my results weren't like clear of your like out of the curve so mm -hmm. just go straight pro and you you could do it maybe i could maybe i couldn't i don't know but also there's a lot of maybe more pressure you start feeling mm -hmm. that you know if you go pro you have to pay sure. for everything Thank and you. my parents were still kind of supporting so i wanted to give them they were telling me i i joke that it was by free and spontaneous i was free and spontaneously forced to go to college <laughs> <laughs> from my parents so they would have a little break you mm -hmm. know and so i went to college mainly for that reason to have a almost like a stepping stone to go sure. pro after and just calm down financially and mm -hmm. have everything paid for and have a scholarship and have a plan B in case you get hurt, in case whatever yeah. happens. But I didn't have that mentality at 17, 18. I just wanted to play. Mm -hmm. But my parents kind of like... Went pushed on, you a bit. Yeah, pushed a little, but in a nice way. And then I met... Encouraged you to... Encouraged, make, yeah. Give you more option for after. Yeah. And then yeah. when I started meeting with the coaches, I finally like, okay, let's let's check what this can bring. And so I started talking to the coaches. 
And also, I really like the coach that I committed to at Pepperdine. Mm -hmm. Also, I visited a few schools. So I think it also helped that I was in the U.S. and I actually opened my mind to it. Mm -hmm. Because in Brazil, you're really far from that culture and from what is college tennis. So yes. when I went and now I, I absolutely love it. You know, I had a, How was the experience? I had a great experience. I always say it's almost like a second family. Mm -hmm. It's also a second home. Like Pepperdine's a beautiful school, first of all. <laughs> so it's... It's right on the water. It's Malibu, so it's not nice. a bad place to Good be. Choice. That's why you choose. <laughs> That's exactly. You didn't care about the coach, to be honest. <laughs> you wanted the nice food. <laughs> the beach made a strong, yeah. strong point there for me. I love the beach. Yeah. I Coming from Brazil, no, for yeah. sure, it was appreciated. The weather, the weather. Is, and every year I had there, I had ocean view from the room, <laughs> so I was very lucky. Oh, it's literally on the beach then. yeah you look you're you're on the mountain <laughs> the the campus is in the mountain and you overlook the ocean with nice. pch you have this maybe after tennis we you can go to college now <laughs> <laughs> yeah we can go back we stay a, a few years there. i stopped school so i have to go back to finish so maybe one time we go together okay instead. you you never you never graduated I didn't finish no okay why so well exactly so when i was deciding to go it was the year that they were kind of transitioning you could have a full scholarship mm -hmm. and then you could stop um i'm not sure what it's called now but you could stop and then finish um your diploma later on mm -hmm. so they had that deal for to encourage people to go to college tennis and still play college not completely give up on it it wasn't like one way or the other mm -hmm. nowadays i think it's a lot more possible and when i went it was still a little bit Uh, uncertain you know there are mm -hmm. a lot of guys that had done well playing college tennis and went pro yeah. but not as many women i think now we have so many great so examples many. in top 50 What? and doubles even more in men's and women's mm -hmm. so i think now it's a lot easier to just not convince but like show the positive sides of it yeah there's a clear path now right yeah mm -hmm. and so going through it for me it was just very eye-opening and it was amazing to play for the team mm -hmm. i had a great first year in college just tennis wise and also um off like in life with my teammates i had an, an amazing team which are some of my best friends too now that's nice. so i think that was that's by far the coolest part about it for me or the mm -hmm. biggest um the most important and fun part about the college tennis is the coaches i'm still keep a mm -hmm. great relationship and learn so much from them on court and off court and a lot of things you you look back and you're like, oh, this makes a lot more sense now, you know? It's, it's like hindsight and just yeah. anything. So it's a great learning process. And also some tough times too in terms of my first year, I did extremely well in tennis in, in college. I think mm -hmm. I made to two in the NCAAs, mm -hmm. which was great for me as a freshman too. And with my team. And then my second year, four of three seniors graduated. One of my best friends left the team. And so for the second year, it was a huge change in team dynamic too. So it's still great. I actually, I played with Mayar, you know, Mayar Sharif. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, so okay. I, we still see each other all the time here and, and <laughs> it's great to, you know, exchange memories. Cool. So I think it's, yeah, I think it's a very interesting transition when you go from one year to year two and the same in life. Like sometimes you change things and you have to adapt so quick to mm -hmm. whatever is going on and, and it's so different. But playing for the team, I think it's my best memories for sure. It's just, it's okay. so fun. It's just, you have the pressure, but you also have, you know, the team celebrating after mm -hmm. or like crying after together. I don't know, it's, it's something I miss a lot. And that's why I also love playing for, for Brazil or any team competitions. Yeah. I'm always in, like, I, I love it. How was this transition, as you say, from playing for a, like a university, you know, in a, in a team? To going yeah. by yourself out there, no, and because tennis is a very even in doubles, I guess it's still a quite individual sport. Was it complicated for you? To, like, yeah. So after my second year on in college, I played. Actually, I played two seasons, and then I was like, I'm done. I want to go play. I want to mm -hmm. go play pro. And so I took one semester off. It was okay. kind of how I talked to my coach. I said, Look, I'm ready to go. I'm not coming back. But the fall is from um, May or august through december but then the spring ends in may so mm -hmm. i had may through basically december to play pro mm -hmm. and so i had an issue with my visa at that time so i didn't go back to the states which was my initial plan so i had a little mm -hmm. change of plans and i went to europe to play tournaments and i did fairly well in doubles and mm -hmm. so i picked up my ranking there but in singles not as much as i wanted to at the mm -hmm. time so we won we won a few tournaments like 15s 25s 
played 60, so at the time it was a good progress. But um, I think I started to miss, you know, the just mm -hmm. the spirit and just like having a backup or having company or or just being not sure. Maybe I was just a little insecure about like, mm -hmm. I don't Going know. Fully yeah, in, maybe uh, I wanted. And then the team was very good at the school and I was like, I don't think I, I gave my all. You know, I finished mm -hmm. as well as I could have or I feel like I could have given more to yeah. the team. And also it would be, I had a, the experience of one semester on tour to learn a lot of things or what I was missing or what I needed actually to, to go and be like fully committed. Mm -hmm. So I started November, December, I started thinking about all these things and I'm like, hey coach, I want to be back <laughs> for one more season. <laughs> and I think it's so beneficial to play season two because you play a lot of matches mm -hmm. and I think that helps so much with your game and having a coach on court yeah. and going through the ups and downs of the match, but having a coach there to like, Kind of guide you through it or help you through it so i think that was big learning to um in college and so we played one last season didn't do as well as i would like result wise but i think it was for sure really important to kind of be like okay now i, I want a full go pro and mm -hmm. like i know kind of the a structure that i need in terms of training i need a coach or i need a place to yeah. you know some base and something very structured and before mm -hmm. in my life i've always been kind of like spontaneous or <laughs> i won't say lost but like yeah kind of like moonhead ish mm -hmm. or uh, yeah. you know trusting your instinct yeah and... very instinctive and it shows even on court it's kind of <laughs> yes. how i play so i think in college it also helps with me kind of be you know you need to make plans you also need tactical <laughs> you need to you yeah. can't just be so loose about everything mm -hmm. you know something my dad always told me like made fun because they're very structured <laughs> but i think that part in college was very good and so mm. Yeah, I think that was the biggest learning. The transition was like you actually need some things to be in order for you to be able to be calm and perform perform well because you know everything is taken care of. Mm -hmm. You played singles and doubles in college. Yeah, I actually did well in, better in singles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my highest was two and my doubles highest was eight. Okay. And but we had a really good doubles team in the in our team. They were number one in the country. Mm -hmm. So I played two for part of the year and then for sometimes and then. I believe one other times too, because it's all about also the team and how yeah. you want two out of three points. So it's how we balance. So, I mean, it's still fun and great. Yeah. Cool. But I like to remember my singles years <laughs> in college. Yeah. I'm like, I love that. <laughs> I used to get so fired up and like, yeah. And after college, then you decided to, to try the pro and WG adventure on both uh, singles and doubles, I believe. Yeah. So I, people always ask me about my transition to only doubles. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think it was very natural. During college, I always played in the summers, mm -hmm. tournaments, pro tournaments. So okay. my doubles ranking was already decent, pretty good, maybe 200, 300, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. My highest ranking singles was 430 mm -hmm. when, in 2019. Yeah, 2019. And that's when I went to Brazil to play a few futures. I remember exactly in March. And I was playing singles and doubles on clay. And I remember I had a really terrible match in singles. And I'm like, I remember my grandpa was watching too. And I was like, you know, <laughs> like I was so pissed and so negative, you know, like so disappointed with how I was, how I was playing. And it really pain, like he was painful, you know. But then, you know, go on for the next tournament. And then um, Juju asked, actually, she asked me, if she got a wild card in Monterey. It was a 250 at the time mm -hmm. in doubles. And she's like, hey, do you want to play together? We'll get a wild, wild card. And I was like, for sure. I, I looked, I liked, I didn't never play with her before, but I really liked her. And I was like, it's a great opportunity. So let's go instead of playing. I was like so pissed at, at singles at the time where I didn't have any tournament. I had my first experience at Roland Garros in, no, how do I say it properly? Roland Garros. Roland Garros. Le Roland Garros. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I gotta say it proper in front of you. So then I think that was my first experience, taste of like Grand Slam and where I wanted to be and how I wanted to play. And it's just, you could feel a little bit of different intensity and different way girls played, even though I felt like I was quite at the level. Mm -hmm. I think you need some experience playing at the level to actually sure. progress and, you know, be willing to lose and do something else to kind of like raise to the next level. Mm -hmm. And so after that, um, I was one out of Wimbledon, but I kept trying to get in. And so for the fall, I had to make kind of decision 
of my schedule what I was going to do and so I was really tired of singles in terms of how I was playing I was just kind of sad you know kind of bummed or maybe had higher expectations than what I was getting and so I think that was the main reason why I was like you know like why I keep fighting for this if that was going well it's something I like and I also thought going to the bigger turns would just help me um, increase my level so at the time I was sure I was yeah. like I'll play I'll pra- I can practice singles with you know, sign up on looking with people. Sometimes I did that a lot in the beginning and just get better, you know, get my level up and then I can play singles after because I feel yeah, like I needed to. At, maybe at the, at the end it was more opportunity and uh, it was not a choice you made from one day to another to say I will stop singles. It was mm-hmm. more opportunity and then exactly. it's true that sometimes you are ranking in, in doubles or sometimes on the other way also just jumped and then you cannot enter the singles tournament anymore. Yeah. Exactly. So then do I play 25Ks in singles where I'm losing first round or qualies or do I go play Grand Slam doubles? So I think on the scale at the time, Mm -hmm. it sounded like a good opportunity for my level and also financially to take a little break, you know, from like um, Mm -hmm. having didn't have any sponsors or anything. So then I think it was just natural decision and Mm -hmm. luckily it went it went well. Yeah, like it looks it went, like it paid off, no? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it went right quick. Bet. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. I'm glad it went quick and like we got good results quickly and just kind of yeah. maintained. Because you were years. mentioning this was uh, 2019, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you had uh, success quite quickly. Yeah? yeah, so 2019, we made it, we finished the year, I think, almost to top 100. Okay. And so I'm pretty sure we made Australia 2020. Yeah, we played 2020 Australia. Mm-hmm. And then from then on, started making all the slams. But then I didn't have any full year on tour until last year, which is interesting because okay. like, I've played a lot. I feel like now I'm you know, more used to everything and everyone. But 2020 was pandemic, so we missed mm-hmm. part yeah, of the year yeah, from March. Sure. So I never played Indian Wells from March through... Um, August or so and then 2021 I played pretty much the whole season but then I got injured in actually I got injured for before um, French yes, Open I got appendicitis the, in Strasbourg the okay. week before French in okay. 2021 mm-hmm. so I missed French and then it was the qualifying for Olympics it was my last one to try to make top 10 to guarantee mm-hmm. and so I was devastated I was like no way like okay let's leave it to whatever to the universe and then got to play Wimbledon but I took I had to take three weeks four weeks off and then played Wimbledon we lost but it was great I was happy to to just be there kind of thing it was my first time playing Wimbledon Mm -hmm. and then 2020 anyway Olympics happened which was amazing big like yeah we will come back on it a little bit yeah yeah exactly no I mean I think how how was it that you went to the Olympics thinking you had a real chance or not or at that moment well i don't know the the way we went is um (laughs) what happened was uh we were signed in so me and laura pigossi Mm -hmm. she was the highest uh, singles yeah she was like 180 maybe at the time (laughs) 170 or something which is it's crazy yeah but she didn't know she was signed up i knew because i was on top of uh, (laughs) our uh, the guy from the federation Mm -hmm. And so I was like, how's it looking? How's the list? How is anything happening? Because you couldn't only go for mixed because we had enough mm-hmm. of the guys to play. Mm-hmm. But I remember exactly after Wimbledon, I went home because I had a few weeks with the appendix to, to just rest. So I only practiced a few days and got to play Wimbledon. Yep. Then I went home to be like, okay, let's take two, three weeks. Since I didn't think I was going to make Olympics to practice and get ready for a hardcore season. Mm-hmm. And then we just do a, a off, little mini off season yeah. to practice. And then I was in Michigan at the time with my coach. We were practicing and enjoying like a, the lake, mm-hmm. so, <laughs> the lake, which is so pretty and so like nature. Kind of, mm-hmm. I love that, you know, very calming. Yeah. And so one day I knew it was the last day to withdraw from Olympics. Nice dip. It's... Tokyo time, so I had no idea, and I get a call in the morning, and the um, our captain from the federation, he's like, hey, you got in, I need your verbal commitment, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm still sleeping, half asleep, <laughs> and I just can't believe it, Yeah. and so of course I agree, and Laura is also calling me, because she already knew she was playing like finals in Kazakhstan, mm-hmm. but she had no clue she was 
in like she had no clue she was even signed up so he called her hmm. and he's she's like oh can you call me later because i'm about to play finals of 25k <laughs> and then he's like no no, no we need to talk same. we need now and then he told her obviously she called me we go crazy on the phone we're like facetiming <laughs> like what's <laughs> happening and what just happened like your life turns around in like one second yeah and then she's very competitive and she has amazing energy and she's like lou you know we're not going to tokyo just to go to tokyo right like <laughs> And I'm like, we just we just got in, you know, we're the last alternate. I don't know how the heck it happened. But anyway, like the Olympic Committee, the Brazilian Olympic makes crazy like flight adjustments because there's also logistics to get to Tokyo. Mm-hmm. I was in Michigan, she was in Kazakhstan. We had to get there in like three days or so, but you needed two COVID tests. There was a lot yeah, of things going on because of, because of the pandemic. But also, I think it's probably why some people withdrew and like the cut wasn't as high. And so we got there and yeah, started the dream run. It was, we were just so excited. I think it's always been a dream of mine. I've loved Olympics more than I think any sporting event. Like I'm a huge fan of okay. Olympics. Huh. I've always grew up watching. I mean, with all the sports you did as a kid, uh, you, you could have competed <laughs> many of them. Yeah, I would. I would. I think I would. I think when I was younger, I wanted to be a volleyball player. Like okay. very little. I mean, it's, it's very strong I in love, Brazil. Yeah, also. it's it's huge. Very Both rich. beach and regular vo- indoor volleyball. Hmm. I love watching them, and it's, I'm a big fan of the team. Yeah, now. your your run in Olympics was almost every match super tiebreak or something like this. No? Yeah, first match we won um, two sets against mm-hmm. Canada. It was a, a good match, but good start uh, for us. And then I'm pretty sure second round was Czech. I think mm-hmm. we played Vondrusova and Pliskova. Okay. okay. So p- huge at the time. Now too, but like great, great yeah. players. Uh, we won 11-9. We saved match points wow. in the Super Breaker. And then I One think, or a couple of match I points? I think two. Maybe okay. two. Oh, One or two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah, I don't remember the scores. Like Laura would remember everything. Now mm-hmm. I just remember like the picture. I was like 11-9 <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, let's, we did it somehow. Yeah. And then I think we played Matex and US. So it was Matex and, and should I forget? I don't know who we should play with now. I'm terrible with remembering matches. That's all right. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I will remember now. It's just I'm blanking right now, but I, I probably <laughs> know. But also, I had Super Tiebreak 2. No match points, but Super okay. Tiebreak. <laughs> That's some improvements. Yeah, <laughs> we take it. And then I think it was semis. We lost against. Um, Bencic and Golovic, mm-hmm. Swiss, Switzerland. And I remember exactly because we were winning. We started the match like on fire. We were 4-1 up and we had a set point. I had an overhead. Actually, I don't remember the overhead, but Laura reminded me that I missed, <laughs> that I missed the overhead. I'm like, come on. You did you, you really? missed it. Yeah, did you need it to do that? <laughs> and then we ended up losing the set and mm-hmm. we lost the match. And then we always joke about it because we were devastated, like really sad. We were, we were, we had no, no reason being there. You know, we were last yeah. alternates. We made semis. We lost. We we're like, dream of gold is gone. You know, <laughs> like so much drama. And it is really sad at the time because then you start like we were in a row, and then we went um, back to the village, and then we had to do videos for the media all the time. Mm-hmm. And so I told Laura like, hey, let's just do the quick video here. And then we send it and then we're done. We can, you know, we eat, rest, refresh. And, sh- and then I start the video. I'm like, oh, we have tomorrow to practice. And then we play Saturday for the bronze medal, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, wait, we don't play tomorrow. We play Saturday. I'm like, yeah, we only play Saturday. And she's like, so I can cry now. I'm like, yeah, what do you mean? And she just starts bawling. <laughs> And crying, crying, crying. But it's literally like she turned it on, you know? She was just kind of holding in so that okay. we could be ready for the next day. And I'm like, calm down. Like, you know, <laughs> just let whatever you need out because we need we have a day to prepare. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, bronze medal match was crazy. I mean, um, until now, I think we were just in a very good moment, Laura mm-hmm. and I. Yeah. In the beginning, I think the team was just there kind of supporting us. But we always kind of believed, you know, we could go far. I, I don't know, you don't think of gold in the first match. You just think of one match at a time. Yeah. And because we were so excited about the Olympic experience, we were just living in the moment. I think it's the only time in my life that you, like, fully feel present, you know? Hmm. Just, like, I just want to be here. Like, ever. I just want to stay yeah. here as long as possible. So you're motivated <laughs> to, like, keep winning, keep doing what you're doing, just embracing really the... Just everything, like the the athletes walking. I'm just a huge 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was just a huge emotions all day and every day. And I think it was really fun to share it with her because I knew how special he was and yeah. we get along and we're friends. So he was kind of like dream come true every day. Whatever we're doing, it's just like magical. And so for bronze, we we lost the first set against Russia. It was Kudermetova and Vesnina, uh, another like crazy good team. And then we lost first set. And then the second, we started getting a bit of momentum. And then we started like believing a bit more and like growing in the match and growing growing break and then we we win the second set and mm-hmm. we go for the breaker and they take a toilet break so they leave and we're just sitting there like shit you know like you're <laughs> waiting point. one minute for 10 point breaker to, to yeah. decide a medal is 10 points away yeah we were like let's do it you know we have the momentum second set we won were you scared let's or not start. I, I don't know it was just Again, present, you know, mm-hmm. you, you're not thinking about whatever. I was just trying to stay calm with me and just do my part. Mm-hmm. And she was also hyped and like talking more. I was just trying to like concentrate, kind of yeah. breathe and I don't know, wait. And so she started singing the national anthem, the part that we always sang. Because mm-hmm. every time we walked on corn, we sang a part that we like about the anthem just to get us chills and like get hyped on, up. And uh, before the super time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So she's like, da, da, da. productive to and, like, <laughs> and they were like singing, kind of just enjoying the the mood and mode. And we're like, let's do it. And then we started to break her like seven two down, Ooh, uh, like no five zero, and then it's seven wow. two down. Hmm. And we're like, yeah, that, that didn't work, you know. <laughs> 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 but then we go then nine five down. <gasps> no way. Yeah, nine five, and then I remember I'm serving. I serve first <laughs> one. We win the point. I don't think she returned. Good serve, but normal. That time we're not even talking. We're just like, do what we have to do. You know, it's automatic mode. Yeah. And somehow we just get in flow. Like I trust her. I let, I know she went to the back to breathe and do her thing. So I just let her go. I'm just focused on me. And then we play another point. We win 9-6. No, 9-6, then 9-7, then 9-8. And then our team at outside starts to like, making noise because now they're like whoo nine eight is it's happening nine, it's gonna happen yeah. come back is something's happening cr- something's happening and then hmm. nine always switch sides and laura's like pulling the crowd and there's no one in the <laughs> <There's stadium. no> <laughs> <laughs> just our team we're like we're so hyped up we switch sides and of course we have the momentum we just came back you know for match points obviously yeah the momentum's on our side we end up winning the next point 10 nine and then um she's about to serve this season is about to serve serves the first serve it's let or second serve let and in and i think it was two lets before we played the point so like the tension is just like not be more drama <laughs> yeah. than that, yeah. and then i just know from the video laura returns comes into the net she never returns and comes into the net like the the whole game plan is laura you take care of the back lou stays in the front you take care of the baseline, Lou does her thing yeah. at the net, and that's it. <laughs> With the whole time, it was just like, you know what you have to do? I do what I do, and we, we do <laughs> it. <laughs> and we do it, and it worked all the way to the end. And yeah, like I put a volley, and the ball goes out, and we, that's, that's it. It's like, hmm. I don't know what I thought at that moment. It was just so intense, you know? It's so mm-hmm. like, what just happened? You can't <laughs> believe it. Laura's um, crying, I'm crying. I'm to, uh, to a bronze medal. Hmm? From almost being outside yeah. of the yeah. draw. Yeah, three weeks yeah, out yeah. before you were not supposed to play. Yeah, at all, at all. It's first uh, medal huge. for tennis in Brazi- uh, yeah. Brazil. Yeah. Wow. Ooh, that was first a good one. medal. Yeah, it was. I didn't. We didn't know this at the time. I think it, it, we just learned after. But I think it was just so cool, so special because it was yeah like that. You know, you just hmm. your life changes within one week. How but did, even how did it change your life? I think. First of all, like emotionally, mm-hmm. I think it was the biggest emotion I've ever felt, mm-hmm. like explosion of emotion. So I just felt a lot of things that like you can't keep inside. You know, I've always been someone very internalized. A lot of emotions yeah. I couldn't speak out or couldn't really, you know, put put it out to the mm-hmm. world or talk to people so much yeah. about like very internal things. And I think that was just too much to handle inside. <laughs> you know, there's you just can't keep something like that inside. You just have to like let your real self go um i think believing in dreams or dream it sounds so cliche but when you actually leave something so big it's like believing that you know hard work pays off and things happen Mm -hmm. it just it just feels like everything worked out for that moment and it's 
it's yeah. something and everybody who helped you on the way is is there and is celebrating even if far you know they you know had a part in it <laughs> and to share with laura was i think huge you kind of become like it's such a strong bond for a leap through something so special mm -hmm. and so intense in, in such a short time period of time yeah. and that the reflect you had after so like i think that's what changed for me it was just the believing like you know things can happen you dreamed about this or you didn't even dream about this because it seemed so far <laughs> away and you're here and it's happening and you made it happen you know yeah. you kind of earned it too so i think that's why it also made it extra special i felt like every match we had to learn our way we had a tough draw mm -hmm. and we kind of pushed through every match and kind of believed in each other when probably nobody not nobody else but even the team was like we're not you don't look at the dry be like this is the strongest team you know you're like we're definitely dark horses and we we managed to find a way to put our strengths together and make it work so i think that was a huge uh accomplishment on that part mm -hmm. and just i think back home just media yeah for sure and nowadays like social media instagram and followers and just interviews and a lot of famous known tv channels because mm -hmm. i think we had uh, i think it's the most medals we have in women's for brazil or oh. in inter in general you know mm -hmm. for a country at maybe like 18 okay are so medals in brazil or teams in sports so it's not like i'm not gonna compare to us or something but there's so many medals that you kind of get lost i mm -hmm. think because it's um i think olympic sports get a lot of credit and a lot of Uh, noise and attention in Brazil so and since it was the first medal you know it's cool making history and a lot of the tennis community just I just we really felt the tennis community coming together you know people that you don't talk forever and they watch mm -hmm. but just because how the match went down it, it's cool like have you ever <laughs> yeah. seen a match it's in the breaker but then for a super tire and coming back at mm -hmm. nine five Yeah, it's, it's not only winning a medal, but, but how you make it, no? that makes exactly. it even more yeah. memorable. It's from round one, like mm. for yeah. everyone following the Olympics, you know, the Brazil... Uh, people love this kind yeah. of story. Adventure was well. like... No, the, the, under, the underdog. What is under happening, yeah. you know? There Because should be a movie about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We no. should, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe eventually. Because Laura on the paper, she's not at all a double specialist. And yeah. in single, she was also Laura rank, like you say. Yeah. It was completely like a surprise from, for a team... Mm. And it's nice. I mean, it's very Olympic uh, story. 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 Yeah, <laughs> typical. Yeah. Exactly, Olympic story. Exactly. <laughs> so I think it was really cool to to see the videos after, and we we're like, mm -hmm. we're crazy. And we get so many. I think at the time, what was most special or cool is that we keep getting messages from like, after we watched it, we started playing tennis, or kids, or we stayed until three in, three in the morning screaming. We woke up the neighbor, the people, the I don't know. They called us in the room telling us to keep <laughs> quiet. And my brother is like, I woke up the whole house and the kids started <laughs> crying, but it's still worth it. You know, like so yeah. many, so many different stories of people were remembering what they were doing when we were sure. winning, you know, and kind of saying yeah, like how it was fair. for them. So I think that was really cool to be like, oh, our, our card, you know, like our heart is, is, is good. Otherwise we wouldn't have survived it. Did you go to Brazil after the medal? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. The tennis schedule. Of course you did not. <laughs> yeah. I flew straight into San Jose mm -hmm. in California. Um, after and then, a few good parties, I guess, no? <laughs> not really. No. No, I'm not the mm. biggest right party after. goer. Mm. Yeah, true. Yeah. And yeah, tennis not, never stops. I'm not the biggest party goer. Laura and I really <laughs> just slept that day. <laughs> not, we slept late and I think we talked yeah. family and it's... Mm. And also, you don't talk about the part after mm -hmm. you win. You also have, you know, a lot of interviews. And we had to sure. wake up at 6 a.m., I think, to do interview for Brazil. Okay. To do, because of time difference and go yes. live and whatever. So you have a lot of, you know, you have yeah. a lot yeah. of... Behind the scenes that nobody sees. That's yeah. not, yeah. not always very fun. The, glam the not so glamorous part about yeah. winning. <laughs> Still fun at that time, because everything... Mm. I think it took me a long time to stop smiling since that happened <laughs> i had a crazy aura i feel like it's the best feeling about the olympics it was just i just felt uh bliss you know mm -hmm. like yeah. I was just, you were flying i was just like you know i mean it, this is it <laughs> like, it doesn't get better than this you know this is it but then yeah we went straight to san jose and then montreal cincinnati and then it was open mm -hmm. and we had a good run so we made finals and then we won montreal made finals it Cincinnati. changed your mindset olympics like to you were going to the tournaments thinking yes i can win anything oh yeah for sure 
Mm -hmm. It was huge. And also, I, I was playing with Gabi at the time, and we had a, a huge run. Mm -hmm. So we kept the momentum from Olympics and went finals in San Jose, 500, won Montreal, which is my second thousand. Mm -hmm. And then finals of Cincinnati, all in a row, in one week off, and then semis of US Open, and that's when I got my injury, like my knee injury, and tore my ACL. So it was like literally one month and a half of like boom, 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 results, 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 but also just just intense living, you know, just mm -hmm. amazing. Everything yeah. is working out and just... You felt uh, like a huge uh, confident boost with the result or with your level or... Yeah, I was definitely my best level and just fitness too, like physically feeling good. I was just like, I kid you not, like so happy, bliss. Mm -hmm. In terms of obviously had low moments too in, in the tournaments, are you losing the final and like yeah for sure stress or sometimes tired too because it's a lot going on. Your mind is still absorbing mm -hmm. just the experience in general and the results, but you're almost just going. You know, sure. you have tournaments, you're doing well, and it's you're I'm like soaking it in, but at the same time performing and, and keeping it rolling and enjoying. I was just happy at, at the time, you know, mm -hmm. with the people around and <laughs> yeah, with the team and just. I don't know, things were just flowing. So when things are good, you just kind of keep momentum going and yeah. embrace it, you know, let it flow, let it surf the wave, kind of as I like to say. How excited for you are you for Paris 2024? So excited. I can't <laughs> wait. Same team back? No, I'm actually playing with Bia ah, this yeah. time. Hmm. Of course. Yeah, so this time we uh, we actually get in with ranking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. almost seated. <laughs> We're almost seated. Now yeah. it's not an underdog story no, anymore. No, anymore. <laughs> no, it's so different. Pressure is coming. Yeah, you have so much more expectations, yeah. not from us, not just from us, but from the country. Yeah, and for like, sure. Of course, I mean. And yeah, pressure and everything. Mm -hmm. But also, I'm so excited. I just... For me, Olympics is just something so unique. Mm. And in tennis, you know, it's different for everyone. But for me, I, I keep it. it. It means so much for me to... Mm -hmm. First, it was the event that changed my life for of course. By, from in every way possible. But also, I can see the magnitude of how much it can impact the country in Brazil. And obviously, in tennis, I think for us, it was a huge difference in, in Brazilian tennis. And now we, we're in a really big high mm -hmm. in every way possible. A lot of yeah. girls playing well, a lot of guys playing well. We have... So many people here, even playing, you know, women yeah, and a boom. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Brazilian a lot of players. More sponsorships, more tournaments, more kids have more people to watch, you know, more kids playing. I don't know. It's just a snowball of great things happening for Brazilian tennis. So the, mm -hmm. I think an event like that can do more for the country than any other sporting event sure. or yeah. just of the union of the nation, you know. I just mm. think it, it represents so much the values of Olympics. So for me, it's so cool just to even be there. Obviously, we want results when I bring the gold. <laughs> you know, that's the main goal. It's the mission. Yeah, that's nice. But I'm excited to live through the experience. That's cool. Kind of like find a new way to mm -hmm. to dive in again. Going for the and second not, medal. <laughs> yeah, and not expect to be like the other one because I've accepted, you know, nothing is going to be like the other one because it's just sure. so different. Mm -hmm. but yeah. yeah, this is crazy. And you? Yes, I'm, I'm very excited. <laughs> You're playing at home. Just a yes, bit of pressure, yeah. Uh, I'm glad also it's finally happening because uh, I feel that people have been talking to me a bit about Paris 2024 uh, for 10 years. Mm. Really? No, like oh. since it's out, you know. Yeah, but, uh, I bet. Yeah, of course, it's super exciting. Uh, my past Olympics experience are all the opposite of yours. <laughs> oh, sorry. We can get I have to win. Single double mixed Aww. in two in two editions. We can get together in Paris and just like soak it in, you know, bring oh, the good vibes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring the good vibes. I will always hang out with you. Like uh, my experience in grass last year was so good. That's true. Yeah. Positive energy you give people is so good. I had a great time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited. You know, I felt uh, I feel very grateful, and it's some a chance that very few athletes have. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And playing in July in Paris under the heat with like all the fans and yeah. the emotions, and let's see what happens. You know, mm -hmm. like like you say, yeah. you know, like let's try the best and let's see what is yeah, happening. Yeah. But One day at a time. Yeah, yeah you yeah. can control the results. Mm. But like the experience for me, it has to be like soak it in. It's <laughs> Olympics, you know. You for sure. I will follow your village. advice. I will yeah. follow the yeah. definitely. We go to the advice. <laughs> I like it. 
I think going back to 2021, you went yes. from the best moment of your career to right after, like one month and a half after, no, uh, experiencing a, a to the, yeah, the worst one. How was it for you? Yeah, I mean, I think now I have actually more, I've had enough time or more years, I guess, to yeah. think about it and see how it affects me. Mm -hmm. But during the time, I keep what I was saying. I think I was in such a high and like yeah. blissful and just happy moment. Yeah. Well, you were in the semifinals of a US Open. Yeah, so yeah. That's it already... was seven six. I was watching. Yeah, I you remember. were watching. Yeah. I was watching. Oh, so mm -hmm. I remember. Yeah. So I was. I think I was so happy at the moment mm -hmm. at like the phase that I was living that I was so grateful for everything that I had just been through that I didn't, I was not negative with the, okay. you didn't like beat me down. I think the hardest moment for me was to withdraw from the match, mm -hmm. like the moment. So when I, I fell, I hurt and like, it's so quick. I, I had no yeah. clue what ACL is. Like, you just never think about it until you actually have an injury like that. Mm -hmm. And I remember exactly, we called the play and I was going to go right. The ball came to the back end and I went to go and I just, blank like I kind of passed out for a moment mm -hmm. and I fell on the floor and then I started hearing the ball this is all in a fracture of like five seconds yeah. you know if you count when I start going up and I hear the ball and then I look up and I see Gabby's hitting the ball <laughs> and she's too long because I didn't get up and then I'm like you know finally realizing and I just don't know what actually happened I know I, I felt a pop or something and so the physio already comes running And then I don't have pain now. Like she touches, she does this, that. And I'm like, no, I don't have pain. But you're obviously like shocked. Your body, in my mind, everything is in shock. And then I try to get up and like, I can't. Like I can't step on the leg. And that's when I know it's like, uh, mm -hmm. like something mm -hmm. good. Yeah, like this is not good at all. Because at that time, you know, you just, you can play on one leg, you know, <laughs> like have you yeah. run, you do everything. But yeah. I, I just, I We go off court to off court treatment and see what happens. And then I tell them, no, let me try to walk at least because you have the stairs right off of Louis Armstrong, which I love that court also. And then I try to stay up and then my leg is loose. It's like a cr yeah, sorry, it's cringe feeling for people that don't, don't mind. But if you don't mind, it's like if you have a rubber band and it's just like, <laughs> and then you just know you're not going to play, you know. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it sucked because it's like, I felt like we were so close and yeah, I think it happened in the match, yeah. but we were really in a row and like doing well at tournaments. And I think it's, we're finally clicking. We went through moments during US Open, but I think we're just a very bond team and strong team and also believing in like, if we do our part, we we have high chances of winning at that time, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And then I just felt bad for like this situation for everything, for God before, you know, like kind of ruin it. Cause in doubles, that's the thing too. You, you just don't ruin it for yourself. You ruin mm -hmm. it for the team. And I think it's painful because not just your dream or like, you know, we're so close. It's someone else's too. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I, I felt that pain at the time. And I think it hurt with the, my mom was there and I tried to be like, I'm okay. You know, mom, like <laughs> <laughs> as bad as it sounds like it, it's no. And so I think once I got over that hump, I was very, I was very positive at the time. You know, when I, when I lost the match, couldn't come back. That's when I was like, you know what, now what is this? Like, what can I do? What do I have to do? So I'm like on the wheelchair and Arthur Ashe had to do one to the open. So I remember I'm showering on the wheelchair and like doing everything and whatever I finally got to pee. But then I had a lot of water and I, it's just the funny part of the story. But we went to, it was like 5 p.m. I'm pretty sure it was Friday or Thursday. So 5 p.m. traffic in New York and I just took so many bottles of water. It's taking one hour to the hospital and I really have to pee. <laughs> So I can't even think about anything else. Like, I'm not thinking about the injury. I'm not thinking about like, why me? Why this is happening? And then my mom is like driving me in the wheelchair as we get to the, <laughs> to the hospital. I'm like, she starts, I'm like, we go in the door. She hits the door and I'm like, mom, oh, mom. So it was, actually that part is really comic. So it's like a funny, tragic part of the story. But then everything yeah, else. Mom was so stressed. Yeah, she was. But she was a trooper. She was great throughout. Mm. It was nice having her there, you know, yeah. at least. Yeah. So at the time, it's just, I think every, I could think of, I had US Open doctors, I had, you know, the whole support. Mm -hmm. So I, I really was, after Olympus, I had such a vibrant, you know, like positive energy in terms of like, you know, this sucks, but I, with the same knee, I, we won a medal, you know, a month ago. So that was mm -hmm. my thought at the time. Yeah. I won't say it lasted like the whole rehab, of course. Like eventually I started kind of like having the more negative talks or, or doubts and stuff. Yeah. But then I think I dropped a couple of tears in the MRI because then 
but I had trouble crying so I couldn't like really let it out still emotions you know like I had the highest high but I still didn't really yeah. felt the low and so anyway found out it was ACL so one year or nine months out at least and then it was just very busy the first few weeks trying to decide what to do you know but I felt very lucky and kind of blessed too in terms of grateful because so many people reached out mm -hmm. oh I have this doctor I have this surgeon this surgeon this so I think because of Olympics too I was really well connected mm -hmm. at the time in terms of players or doctors or you know and so yeah. I think it was I was very busy enough next two weeks trying to you know figure out where I'm going to do surgery how long does it take yeah. what do I do so I think that was more overwhelming than mm -hmm. actually sad in some ways. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, I'll just summarize it. But I think after that, my life just fully changed in so many ways that it's hard to just pick one thing or another, you know. Mm -hmm. And at one point, did you feel it was unfair or did you feel unlucky? Or, or worried about, about, about maybe you know, yeah, coming yeah, back, yes, no? True, because I probably yeah. after a few months, though, you have the doubt of... What yeah, is I think... When I was like seven months out, I had one day that I was like, oh, wait, what if I don't come back the same? <laughs> mm. But like it took me seven months. I, before that, I think I was just on like, yeah, let's go. We're just going to come back, like play US Open. I'm going to come back around the time US Open. Mm -hmm. So at the time I was thinking, yeah, I'll just come back yeah. there and just, you know, like it's fully do. It. And then the seven months, I'm like, I don't know, it was a random day. And I talked to my psychologist. I'm like, look, for the first time, I'm like, shit, what if I don't come back? Yeah. as well as I thought or what if I whatever if it happens again but it didn't I don't think I ever let that thought go in my head so mm -hmm. much maybe it was no. like in one way it's a tra tragedy you know that this happens when you're in your best moment of your career in another way maybe it helps you know in some way like uh because maybe this happens in your worst moment, no? And, and you destroy yourself emotionally. But maybe the yeah. fact that you are so confident when it happens, it helps yeah. you to get through it and know that you can come back and still have a successful career. No? Yeah, I like that thought too. Because then, mm. yeah, I wasn't thinking like, oh, this, this was my peak, you know, I'm not coming back to yeah, that. Exactly. And then I'm someone also who I did a lot of research. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I learned so much about <laughs> knee stuff and rehab yeah, and surgery. Yeah, Talk time, my knee is a bit. Uh, yeah, we, yes. we come to see you. Oh, okay. <laughs> diagnosis. They joke that I do my Google diagnosis, but then no, I'm joking. But it helped me kind of like understand, understand the process. Yeah. You know, timeline. What do you have to do? What are the options of surgery? What can you do? Like, what does that mean for the body? But then. And I love that fitness stuff. So I mm -hmm. love doing fitness. Sometimes if I take a break from tennis, I, it's, I'm not going to say I don't miss it. But yeah, I really don't like, or I'm craving, I really need to play. Unless it's vacation off the yeah. year. And then I'm like, oh, I really want to play. Mm -hmm. But fitness, I'm like, yeah, I want to I wanna do it. You know, yeah. I want to keep active and stuff. Yeah. So it was hard in some ways, the rehab, because most of my hobbies, if not all, are just active, you know, I like go mm -hmm. to the beach, I like hikes, I like going outside and just playing stuff or just, you know, sure. more active things. And so I think that was hard to recognize. But then at the same time, I think it was a good time to work on things and sit down and like, oh, what do I need to work on, you know, tennis wise? What mm -hmm. can I improve? I think most of my doubts were like, why this happened? Like, was I doing something wrong? And then you start doubting what you were doing before. And I yeah. think that's kind of not fair. It's hard to go that route until today. Mm -hmm. You know, if something's going wrong, we start overthinking, like, what are yeah. the possible things that you're doing wrong? Mm -hmm. And so it's a fine line between, you know, finding a mistake or, or trying to find a hole where there doesn't have to be, you know, maybe it's sure. just an accident at the time. Maybe I played a lot of matches. I had a lot of emotional toe in the leading up month. Maybe I had a weakness in my glutes that yeah, I didn't know sure. or my hip or whatever. And then yeah. you just never know, you know, mm -hmm. the doctor won't know. I won't know. We hmm. can only kind of see the mm -hmm. kind of like what could have been yeah. or how to avoid it in the future, basically. And so I think for me it was tough because also I went back to Brazil. This is one part that I don't, I don't think I touched too much on this, but during rehab. So I had surgery in September stayed in the US first couple of months. Then I went home in December to spend with my family. And so that's also so special that you get the time to, you know, see mm. family and I live a live. more normal life. Yeah, no? and I lived in the US since I was in since twenty eleven. So then I went back twenty twenty one, ten years later. And I was like this is perfect time to actually go home and spend more time with sure. my family, grandparents, which I'm really close. Mm -hmm. And then we spent new uh Christmas and New Year's um, 
a lot of us got COVID, so <laughs> terrible. And yeah, end of the year, my mom, me, my grandpa, my aunt. And so this is kind of sad, actually, part of the story. But my grandpa actually passed away in the beginning of January. So for me, that was a huge toll and for the family because it was a huge rock for everyone and like kind of pillar and got everyone together. Just the guy that helped everyone and taught everyone so much. Mm. So it was just a huge loss. And I feel like it was the first time I actually felt grief. Mm-hmm. Yeah, grief is the word, mm-hmm. right? And so it's just a lot of learning about myself. So I think that's the main thing I learned through the process is just how I handle things, emotions or, you know, family and relationships. And I was so long gone for a while. So at the time, at the time I was like, I'm glad I got to spend a few, you know, days at least in yeah. fun times with him before. But it's also very difficult to take those in. Mm. And I think rehab was actually my way to kind of cope with that too, in terms mm. of, you know, I'm just going to grind through this and like, get better (laughs) and just focus on rehab because i was excited about the fitness and about like how the body's improving and then something to focus on so i think i was very positive through rehab also kind of maybe for those reasons i don't know it's just something that you think but you (laughs) never know but how something has a reason and so i think i had a big uh goal and and like motivation to kind of like make him proud kind of thing because he always used to be following he's older you know like eight years old but he's always texting after matches you know like watching the matches on internet so it's very modern to kind of keep up and like be there and so i think for me it was a huge reason why i like kind of you had to come back yeah i mean i had my own motivation but i think to focus and dial in and rehab i think maybe it's just protective mechanism too to not think about that and kind of which is also not good it's good to feel what you feel yeah. But I think it was very, um, a big change because then I stayed home in Brazil instead of going back to the U.S., instead of going back to my to my coach and to yeah. my, to Saddlebrook where I used to train and still use it as my base. I love it there. But like, I think, you know, Olympics happened and then injury happened and then like a big loss in my family. And then I just moved back fully. And then I started dating. <laughs> <laughs> and then I met Guy. <laughs> and then eventually he he stopped playing too in terms of he was going to play and then he stopped his um, playing career to kind of help me coaching because I didn't have a travel coach yeah. mm-hmm. and so he became a travel coach and then yeah like the rest is history so I think it's mm-hmm. a lot of major like life changes and in really dreams that yeah, 16, like, mo- 16 months yeah. now where you grow real a lot as where a you're like, being. Oh, sh- I wish I had like 10 more yeah. years of life to just <laughs> learn and look back and be like you know what to do here no yeah, that's but for yeah. Sure. so I think rehab was a lot of that a lot of like highs and lows mm-hmm. body wise you see a lot of improvements but mainly just emotionally and like life changes and team and making big decisions about really like you know team choosing the right people to be with you mm-hmm. and trusting the process and all of this in the mix of doing mm-hmm. things different than you, you used to do and then also dealing with pain i think it's probably the hardest thing i had to to learn mm-hmm. to play after coming back and like the doubts of like having other pains not actually just the major injury what, was it easy to come back like uh in terms of results were you able to like start delivering quite fast or not yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I did. I did actually She's have really good. good. Ah, yeah, true, true. I, I, for, I, for, I, yeah, no, yeah. I did my research, but I forgot about it. She's too good about it. Yeah. No, I did. Uh, surprisingly, I really did well. So I went to, first of all, I went to US Open just to train, to practice. Yeah. yeah. Because I, that's where I got hurt. So I wanted to, to kind of be there and not, not be playing, but just to practice with the girls. And I went to practice on Louis armstrong because i didn't want that court to be ruined also Mm -hmm. because i love that court yeah and i've played there now this year last year too so it was fun but it was just more like a mental um breakthrough kind Mm -hmm. of thing but i remember a couple days and then um i went to india to play a 250 with Mm -hmm. gabby who was nice enough to take that week not off but like to go play with me a lower tournament just to kind of maybe help me come back Mm -hmm. um and we won that tournament so for me, I think it was important to have someone, you know, familiar to, to do it and yeah, just yeah. kind of be comfortable. But two weeks before when I was in New York, I was like, my knee was hurting. I had a cyst on the side and then it's so painful. And I'm like, 
okay, maybe it's not the time yet, maybe any more time, maybe this is not it, maybe uh, I was like freaking out, you know, <laughs> I was like, maybe I should cancel, maybe I, I should go back next year, maybe I should take my protector ranking and not use on these tournaments, anyway, I just had a lot of thoughts, but then, you know, my, my support team, my PS team <laughs> calmed me down, and then we went to India, we won the 250, and then I went straight to Japan, lost first round, uh, and then I, I think I was... I think I was mentally so tired then. And then mm-hmm. I went back home. I was mentally just because it was like the first time I came back. And then you have so many different feelings on court. And then you can't, I compare myself so much to before. Yeah. And now like going back, I think that's the hardest thing about going out, um, getting hurt on your best. Because mm-hmm. then less memory you have on court is your best. You know, yeah. you're playing some good tennis. You're playing some yeah. good you're tennis. Feeling you're yeah. feeling good. You're moving well. And like, I feel like everything was coming together. Mm-hmm. And so when you come back and you remember that, it's just, it's just Comparison not going to be. Comparison is hard. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you, you, it's so, it's a fine line. Mm. And then also I was a bit worried about like partners, like you're injured. So you, the girls mm. won't know, but I think it's good that you get results right off the bat to, sure. to kind of get it. And so I went to San Diego and I was like, oh, I'm going to play singles. <laughs> <laughs> So I signed up for singles, ITF, um, qualies, and then I actually played, but then at the end of the match, middle of the match, actually, I have really bad plantar fasciitis. Oh, no. So my foot is killing me, and I'm barely stepping, I ended up losing the match, like I leave my shoes, and I'm walking off with just bare foot, and then he's like, he's buying me um, another pair of shoes, and then so I have to play San Diego 500, and then... Uh, Guadalajara and I committed to play with Storm who was also like <laughs> I was so excited because she's the nice one of the nicest persons nicest mm-hmm. players and I felt like our game could match so well but then she also had a little bit of food problem but then I I remember I had I did an MRI and I had you know small injury but enough that I had to rest so it wouldn't get worse. So that's the thing about coming back too, you start hurting maybe mm-hmm. other things. Mm-hmm. And so I, you would go out, for whoever had plantar fasciitis, I don't know if you have, yeah. you like get out in the morning, it's so painful. And so I, I would crawl. On that one. <laughs> you, you crawl out of bed, so I wouldn't step on my foot because I needed it to recover as mm-hmm. fast as possible. And when yeah. I'm rehabbing, like I'm full committed, like I'm so disciplined, you know? So I'm walking, I'm crawling, he's like, where are you? I'm like on the floor, <laughs> like walking to go to the restroom, washing my face and do everything. And I barely walked that week, so I actually, I actually rest. So we play San Diego, we don't do well. But then we go to Guadalajara. Mm-hmm. And so it's a thousand, I like playing on altitude. And then we also have a, a tough draw. But then, anyway, we start playing better, we switch sides. And then we win the tournament, the thousand. And then it's like, oh my God, so exciting. Also tough matches too, like, uh, I think it was... Um, super tiebreaker so we get a lot of ups and downs and we we win and it was such a fun week with Storm too because she's such a positive vibe on court and like very supportive and like I go through my own mental struggles during the match and over like I want to do this better I'm not feeling this yet and or like just moving wise because it's mm-hmm. the knee and protection but when we win it gave me a big confidence boost again you know it just it just helps and also my ranking took off Jumped, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. went up a lot which is helpful because I was like, gee, maybe I shouldn't play Australia. I use my protector ranking for, I don't know, uh, something else. Yeah. Something. yeah. Mm. And then eventually I got in mm. with my regular ranking already in Australia. I didn't even have to use the, um, protected. the protected, uh, which is my favorite tournament too. So I was <laughs> so, so thrilled. And that's also when, and I still played a few tournaments on clay at the end of the year to kind of mm-hmm. get back. We won a 125k with Ingrid. So I was on a road, like winning a mm-hmm. lot of matches, feeling good. Billie Jean King Cup, we qualified as well. And then I went to Australia, won the 500 with Taylor, first week of the year. Got to Australian Open. My partner pulled out last mm-hmm. minute. So I was really devastated because I couldn't wait to get back to Aussie yeah. Open. It's my favorite tournament. But um, then we won mixed with Rafa yeah. Matos. I was at experience those emotions. First slam for you? Yeah, first slam. It was, it was amazing. Um, I think not playing regular doubles. I think it was also my first slam back. So mm-hmm. I was just like really yeah. hungry to play. Australia is my favorite place, favorite <laughs> everything. So I was just so stoked to go. And 
Rafa and his coach are really, we're really close and like good friends and they, we practice together um, sometimes too, which is rare for mixed. We got to play United Cup together okay. the mm-hmm. weeks before. Mm-hmm. So I think it was all like combination of like just cool vibes and mm-hmm. our games match really well. And also, again, we had like tough matches. We played a lot of Australians. So we played on major courts. Nice. So we played, I think, twice on Rod Laver. We played on hmm. uh, Better for Margaret. the memories after. Yeah, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. So like it's rare, you know, it makes we played most matches on stadiums. So it was really cool. And then um, saved match point also, I think, in the semis or quarters, <laughs> one of the matches. And then finals was yeah so special because we were so nervous i remember being like extremely nervous and him too one match he was very nervous and i was kind of like helping out the other match he was like picking me up so i think it was a really cool partnership to to win and he was brazil because he's brazilian Mm -hmm. even more special for like brazil you know i think for us it's for me it's the coolest thing when you play with someone from sync i mean i kind of thrive in those situations and also he being so nice in the team getting along so well Mm -hmm. the whole Again, the experience is so fun and so rewarding. Same with the Olympics. I think the result is unbelievable because of what it brings and mm-hmm. like how we earned it. Yeah. But for me, like the memories of living through it, it's mm-hmm. kind of like the emotions. Yeah, the emotions that you feel is just so hard to replicate that you appreciate so much more when you don't have it. You know, <laughs> like when you lose or when it's you know it's not going your way, it's fine. Or when I was rehabbing or when you're hurt a little bit. And then I think that's it. That's the most, the thing you miss the most, you know, the emotions yeah. of kind of living so intense and like so rewarding. <laughs> so, yeah. And cool. We're getting close to the, the end. We would like to know what would be your advice if you were like 15 again, what would you tell yourself? Um, I think I'd say for sure embrace the highs. Mm -hmm. So like try to live as full as possible in the good moments Mm -hmm. and also just do your best to get through the tough times with uh, the people you, the people you choose to be with, you know, choose wisely, Mm -hmm. but also enjoy, really enjoy the the good times, I think. And then the tough times, just get through it. It's going to end, it's going to pass and try to find good people to get through, through it with you because that will make it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Yeah, it's good one. And who would you like to hear next on the podcast? One man, one woman. One man, one woman. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say, I mean, it's a tough request, but my favorite player ever. <laughs> There's like a hidden uh, <laughs> thing here. It's like the person you say, you have to help us bring it to the podcast. I was going to say Roger, so good luck okay, to you. So <laughs> okay. We take it. <laughs> we take it. That's someone we would love to hear for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, for the men's, I'd say Roger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah I got and for say women's? Yes. For women's, I will say... Um, uh, I think I'd say one of my Brazilians, actually. Mm-hmm. Okay. Laura, maybe you can hear her version of our Olympic story. Sounds yeah. good to me. Bia has a good story, too. So, one of the girls, I'd say. It's okay. True. Okay, sounds good. Sounds great. great stories. Yes, yeah, it is. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, Luisa. I think part two is gonna have to come. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, because we didn't, I feel we didn't went through all our. Yeah, yeah. we had so many. Yeah, I talked sure. too much. No, no, I loved it. I mean, it's I mean, the best time you can it. have when you yeah. have to cut your guest. It means it worked out really well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I obviously, I uh, love your energy you you mm. bring to. Tennis court and outside, I mean, yeah. we got to spend more time last year playing doubles and it was a pleasure and a really good memory for us. Yeah. I will, we, we have to talk about her smile on court because yes. it's uh, so pleasant to see someone like uh, smiling so much, having a good time. But yeah. that, we keep it for part two. Yeah, after yeah. Olympics, after that. Olympics, yeah. we have maybe in Paris. Yeah, yes. we can try yeah. to do a, a second part. Yeah, I, will I love mean, it. we love. We I have a good experience. experience. Yeah, for sure. We I love it every minute. So thank you so much, yeah. Lisa. Thank, thank you, Lisa. Guys. Thanks for having.